What's up everyone? I'm Javar from Deuce of Farms. I'm going to be documenting this entire growth for you week by week. I've been growing for a little over two years now and since the start I've always wanted to learn as much as I can. I'm no expert by no means. I'm kind of just like everyone else at home trying to figure this out. A huge help to me has been the endless information made available online. So I document my grow journey to look back on and possibly help that new grower that could be struggling right now. This growth series is brought to you by Cannon Cribs in collaboration with Ventana Plant Science and Horticulture Lighting Group. I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the Scorpion Diablo and the Diablo X to see what the different spectrum brings. I'm also going to be doing a side-by-side -side of Ventana Plant Science's flavor and pairing it with Athena's blended line. Welcome back to the growth series. In this episode, we'll be covering mid to late flower. In the previous video, we showcased the beginning of the flower, which consisted of weeks one through three. During that period of growth, well, the plants really grew. The plants went through the stretch phase and outgrew the trellis. I could have done certain things to prevent this, like vegging them for a shorter time to decrease the plant size overall, and also actually managing the canopy a little bit better with the height during that stretch phase. Also during that time frame, I did go ahead and lollipop my plants just to quickly clean up the underside of them. If you miss out on any of the videos from this growth series, be sure to check them out and catch up to this point. We're now at the midway point in flower at week four. This is the point that we really start to see the plants solely focus more on producing buds rather than growing. After stretching as high as they did, we don't really have much ceiling space for them to grow much further. However, they still may grow a bit taller as they taper out from that stretch phase, but it won't be as drastic. This is exactly why canopy management is important so you don't outgrow your space. As I mentioned, the plants could still keep growing upwards and that's exactly what they did. We want the plants to receive as much light as possible during this phase just to help us produce the buds we're looking for, but at the same time, we don't want to overdo it. There were two top sites that took a beating from being too close, which left them a little crispy, but that's all right. After seeing that, I quickly removed the cable so that I could raise the lights up further. And that right there is the limit. So any further growth is just gonna have to take the beating. Throughout this grow, I've been measuring things like my temp, humidity, VPD, PPFD, and DLI. I'm tracking all of this using the Pulse Pro to ensure that I give my plants an ideal environment or at least the environment that I want them in. At this point in the grow, my daily light interval is at 46, which for those that do not know, DLI is exactly what the name entails, daily light interval. It's the amount of light intensity received within a day. There are certain calculations you could do to calculate that. With me having my light on for only 11 hours instead of 12, I have to increase the intensity a bit to achieve my target DLI. Over the course of flower, my DLI starts at the mid 30s and reaches its peak about 48 to 50, and then I lower it towards the end. Now, my VBD is at 1.4, and I'll typically stay between about 1.2 to 1.6 in flower. With this being my first run of these genetics, I'm taking notes for future reference so that I can mimic what works and change whatever doesn't. To me, this is a crucial part of growing and it makes all the difference in overall quality, being able to look back and compare notes so you can apply that knowledge learned onto the next grow. Some strains will do better in a specific environment compared to others. So with the notes, I'll know the exact parameters I should have everything set for the next time I run it. With me continuously checking my environment, I'm also checking things like my moisture content of the media as well as the EC. In a previous video, I mentioned how I used drawbacks to increase the osmotic pressure within the cocoa by raising the EC. Not all media is created equal, so things like this isn't just a one-all be-all. It's just something I use and a lot more other people use it with stacking the EC. This is all a form of crop steering and most have heard this term at some point. And whether you know it or not, we all crop steer to some degree indoors. Just by adjusting the environment like temp or humidity, you are adjusting certain parameters to achieve a specific result. As new growers, I know we tend to hear those terms and think it's something so far-fetched that we need a bunch of equipment to do so. Now, of course, it gets a lot more advanced with things like shot dosages on the hour 
and much more but in general the term isn't limited to those things think about driving a car we all pretty much do it but some are on another level with like your formula one or your drifting i say this to say that there are levels and we all start at one if you love the plant and are set on getting better then you will keep progressing speaking of progression these plants continue to do just that as the end becomes closer than the beginning you can see that those pistols that were once white are becoming amber and curling in instead of being spiked out. The trichomes are slowly taking over and building up as if something was icing over. Pistols and trichomes, as we all know, are both indicators for knowing when the plants are finished, but there's still time before the trichomes will be turning amber. The change in the pistols, however, that lets me know that it's time to push the plants to the finish line, so I'm lowering my temps and increasing my dryback slightly. In the stretch phase, I outgrew my trellis, and with me having taller plants without much support, the branches fell over due to those buds swelling up. Now, you can only imagine what was going through my head at this time when I walked in to see this. Luckily, no branches were broken, and I had a ton of garden wire which I used to tie them up to the ratchets. Next run, I'll be going back to the two week veg time from clone, so this won't be an issue. <laughs> Now we're almost at the end of flower and the differences I noted so far were more growth under the Diablo X and maybe a different color. The super buff cherries is a trap cherry cross so that reddish shoe is in the genetics. And to the eye, the plants under the Diablo X do appear to be displaying more of that color. I believe the main difference in color is due to the light spectrum. Once I've chopped them down, I'll be able to place them under studio lights and that's where a fair side by side will be able to show the differences in the appearance. Since I won't get a good shot of the plants from underneath the light until after harvest, I did place the two closest branches next to each other in between the two lights and you can see there was a slight difference in between the super buff cherries under the Diablo X versus the Diablo. When it comes to the Sub-Zero, I'm not really seeing a difference between the two lights. I do like the fact that they are putting out some nice size buds compared to the super buff cherries. And with those bigger buds, the one main difference I'm looking forward to test between the two lights is actually the overall yield between the two. If you're interested in seeing the final results, make sure that you tune back in to the next video where we'll be finishing up flower and harvesting them. 